Good day ladies and gents and welcome to the fifth episode of Nkwenkwezi's Umtiza Forest Trail. So today I'm going to take you on the fifth section of the walk. Please enjoy. Oh wow. You can actually see here there's some fresh buffalo dung with a nice bigger pile just in the grass there. Um, I would say it's probably from early this morning. So we're just going to keep a, a close lookout for them because we definitely want to give them their space if they are in the area. It'll be quite interesting to see if we, we do come across them. Now, I know some of you might be wondering why would buffalo come into a, a forested area like this? But as you can see, there's quite a lot of grass on the floor of the forest. Now, that is very nutritious. Um, I would say the, the grass you'd find here, um, they would actually be a lot more nutritious than out in the open. So every now and again, you would find them um, coming into areas like this. It's not very uncommon. So if you have a look at this tree over here next to me, this is a nguenya tree, or otherwise known as a wild plum. Uh, this is one of my favorite trees to find out on the reserve. It doesn't only grow in very dense forested areas. We often find it alongside the roads um, when we're out on game drive. Now when this tree fruits, uh, the fruits are quite a light red color, a little oval in size, about so big. Uh, very very sour to taste but very refreshing so when these uh, trees are fruiting all well, the rangers very often collect a whole lot of fruits keep it in the land rover um, have it as a little treat every now and again and always i love to bring my guests in on it and see if they're brave enough to taste how sour it is now you'll notice here these little holes that have been bored into the branch over here now this is from a carpenter bee very similar in in look to a bumblebee now carpenter bees will actually bore into dead wood you'll notice the living wood right next to the branch has no holes at all and that is because when carpenter bees bore into the wood they will lay their eggs and the larvae will eat off the rotting wood inside now that is very important in the decomposition of dead wood in the forest um, so it's very important in the ecosystem, which is good to see. Now if you have a look behind me, just up here, close to the skyline, you can actually see this uh, pale fuzz hanging from the branches of the tree. Now that is a species of lichen. We call it old man's beard. If you ever seen these old men growing their beards quite long, it looks quite similar. So old man's beard is very, very sensitive to pollution. It will only grow in absolutely pristine, clean air. The longer it grows, the cleaner the air. And seeing so much old man's beard growing there is very good to see. You know, the air is very clean in this area. You can also look at your general lichen that grows on trees and rocks. Now, General lichen is a little bit more hardy. Um, it can resist or grow in slightly polluted air. Um, so seeing both of them growing here is just wonderful. It's 
so if you've got a quite a sharp eye um, you can actually have a look on the stems of many trees or in a little nook in the branches we've got lots of orchid species that will attach to trees we call these epiphytes now these orchids don't do any harm to the tree at all they get their own food and water they photosynthesize all by themselves you can see here these are their roots going all the way down very beautiful it looks like veins now the specific species is quite small okay they haven't grown much larger at all in the years i've worked here but their root system has developed a lot more uh, very difficult to identify orchids because you need to wait for them to flower uh, to accurately identify them so these ones haven't flowered yet i haven't seen flowers from them yet but hopefully with a lot of persistence we might see them flower soon so this concludes today's episode hope you guys enjoyed it please tune in again tomorrow for continuance of the walk